Everybody give God the glory this morning. Put your hands together. Here we go. Your love won't stand it. In the storm you find it. I got a darkness to your light. Never leave me, oh Lord. You're never gonna leave me. You're teaching me to fight a better fight. Come on, you know it's hey, so. Let your glory shine. Let your glory shine. Let your glory shine. Let your glory shine through me. Let your glory shine. Let your glory shine. Let your glory. Taking every fear and failure You're lifting me to rise above it all oh, 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 oh. Your love won't be taken You're taking who I am and making Something out of nothing for your cause Let your glory shine Sing it with a Come on. Let your glory shine Let your glory shine Let your glory shine
on your foundation, God. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Forever we'll praise your name, Lord. Amen. Forever we'll trust you. God, we want to get understanding. When we shout it out, amen, it just simply says, God, we trust you. With my life, God, with my heart, I'll trust you. Come on, if you trust him today, can you lift your hands? If you trust him all over the room, can you tell him I love you? God, that I didn't even deserve. Amen. Come on, just simply says, God, I trust you when you sing, Amen. I'll follow you wherever you lead me. With one voice all over the room, shout and say, Amen. Amen. We'll 
trust you, Lord. It means that it's finished for you. God's taking care of it all. Amen. Everything he sees, the beginning and the end. Amen. Come on, he's the Alpha and the Omega.
you know he's an incredible God. If you know he's an incredible God, see him. Because I know he's a healer. He's a keeper. And I love him. Because he's so incredible. God, I love you. And I sing it one more time. Because he's a healer. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. And I love him. Because he's so incredible. He's so incredible. He's a healer. He's a healer. And I love him. Yes, I love him. And I love him so much. Because he's incredible. Somebody needs to know he's that incredible for you. Even when we can't understand, God, what you're doing, you still deserve an incredible praise. Come on, has he been good to us today, God? God, we thank you for all of your love. Has he been good to anybody in the building? You know him as not just as what we talk about, but you know him personally as an incredible God. been for you, had it not been for your love, God, your grace that covers a multitude of sins, I can't do anything but give you an incredible praise, anything less is not something you deserve, anything less than just me giving you words is not what you deserve, it's my life. I present to you my heart today, God. Come on, I just dare somebody to stretch your heart up to him. Stretch that heart to him today. You've been a healer for me. I don't know what it is for each and every one of us, but somebody knows him as a healer. Somebody's seen him heal your life. Somebody's seen him heal you physically. He's kept you time and time again. Let's acknowledge his presence. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Thank you. From the highest 
survives to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky, and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. You're all-powerful, untamable All struck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim You are amazing, God This is a lightning bolt and tell them where they should go Source to its light, yeah. yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. All can fathom, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky. Somebody say, you are amazing, guys. You are amazing. Oh, you are amazing, guys. You are amazing, guys. If you really know he's been amazing, shout it out to you.
singing today the Bible says he numbers the stars and calls them all by name I've told you many times just in one galaxy the Milky Way there's two to three billion stars but God knows every star by name is he amazing y'all oh come on now that's just one galaxy there are billions of galaxies think about that y'all Just one, but God knows every star by name. And where you're standing at New Hope this morning, guess what? God knows your name. Jesus said he knows the very hairs on your head. They've all been numbered. Come on, somebody. Thank God today that God knows exactly where you are and exactly what you need. That's a bad God today, and he deserves an incredible praise. Can I find me somebody, lift your voice, and give him an incredible praise. He's amazing. Come on. Come on, if you know him as an amazing. you believe God really loves you today? I mean, thank God for his presence. Turn that microphone on and read that scripture. Marcus, early, get your Bible out. Hurry. Turn to Psalm 139. Marcus, right there. 139, Marcus. Look at verse 17 and 18. Listen to this, y'all. You ain't gonna doubt it after this. How amazing God. I love this in Psalm 139. Just get to it. That's in the middle of the Bible, y'all. Psalm 139, verse 17 and 18. Read it to me, Marcus. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. Stop. Go back and say that again. How precious Uh also are thy thoughts unto me. How precious are thy thoughts to me. Keep reading. How great is the sum of them. How great is the sum of them. I said, look, how many stars are in one galaxy in the Milky Way? Billions. Billions. Keep reading. If I should count them. If I could count all the thoughts that are God more has for me. They are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. When I awake, I'm still with him. Watch this now. If you doubt how amazing God is, he numbers the stars, calls them all by name. That's amazing, isn't it? We're talking about God this morning, y'all. That's amazing, isn't it? But yet that God, same God, can have these thoughts that if the sum of them could be counted, it's like trying to number the grains of sand on the sea. 
How many of you have ever been to the beach? Have you seen all the sand just in a limited portion you were in and one grain, this blows my mind, one grain. God said if you could even number all the grains of the sand of the sea, you can even imagine how much God himself is thinking about you. Come on now, that's love right there. He's thinking about you. And not only that, when I woke this morning, I'm still with it. Now, how many of you believe today that that God today is big, powerful, indescribable? We can't even fathom how to praise God. You've got to break through your routine right here. Get out of your flesh. Get out of your tiredness and lift your voice and tell God, I can't even praise you enough. You're so great. You're so awesome. You love me so much, God. You think about me more than the grains of the sand of the sea. Now go to 12 people and tell them he's going to change your life. in your life. Put your hands together for Jesus. Make some noise up in this house for Jesus. Come on. Amen, amen. Come on, slap your neighbor on the way down and say, he's amazing. He's amazing. He's nothing but amazing. How amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. I'm about to sing now. Y'all made a rap that for you. It's good to have you today. God bless you for being here. If this is your first time in New Hope, we want you to stand to your feet so somebody can applaud for you and love on you and shake your hand. First time guests, God bless all of you. Come on, New Hope. Somebody go and shake their hand and hug their neck. We appreciate you. How many New Hope appreciate them being here? And keep that hand clap right there for those watching my internet on mynhi.org all over the nation and the world. Put your hands together for them right now. Come on, New Hope. Thank God for every person tuning in today. God has got a word for you this morning. How many of you believe you're going to receive a word that's going to change your life? Amen. Where's my radical women at? You'd be crazy. I called them fools in the first service. The Lord convicted me. You'd be crazy to miss the service Friday night. We got the baddest preaching machine in the country. When I say the country, I mean that. Literally, this woman preaches all over the world, pastoring two churches now, one in Orlando and Tampa. That's a bad woman right there. Paula White's going to be with us Friday night. You don't want to miss it. Slap your neighbor and say, if you miss it, you crazy. I'm telling y'all, there's going to be some messed up women in this building Friday night. Shoot. I'm going to be a fly on the wall Friday night. I'm going to check y'all out. It's going to be awesome Friday night. Don't miss Saturday. we got great things lined up for you. we got our own LOL going to be in the house. Lisa, laugh out loud. How many of y'all want to laugh? A merry heart do a good like medicine. Some of this, what's wrong with some of y'all? Y'all ain't laughed yet. I said it's like medicine. You believe your blood pressure come down by laughing? Yes, it can. You believe depression can be lifted off by laughing? Yes, it can. The Bible's true. A merry heart. Tell you, neighbor, you need a merry heart. Do it good like medicine. Ask me, have you taken a dose today? Have you taken your dose today? Are you all right? God bless you. It gives you deliverance. Amen. We got shift happen happening. I need your help. I, I'm, I'm, I need your help. 
I'm trying to market. I'm being straight up with you. I'm trying to market Shift Happens. I can't do that without you. And you know how you market it? You get stuff out there and people start questioning. What's that t-shirt mean? What's that band right there mean? What's that book you're holding right there means? It means things in your life are all constantly shifting and changing your life. How many you believe it's always shifting and changing? I tell you never, nothing ever stays the same. It's always changing. So get you a bracelet today. Go to the bookstore. Visit our bookstore. Get that book in your hand and get a t-shirt. And let's get out in this city and let's let people see shifts happening. Amen? And it'll be a conversation piece. First of all, they'll think it says, right. So they'll think it says that. And then you say, no, 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 no. Shift happens because God took my life from being over here and he shifted it. Now I'm over here. Now you can start testifying what God's done for you. Has God done anything for anybody in this building? Get your tithe out of your pocket. How many tithers I got? Stand to your feet. I'd fake it till I make it. I said, how many tithers I got? I'm going to teach you something about tithing I told the first service. How many of you have ever used a credit card? When you used a credit card, guess what? You had to pay the interest on the credit card if you didn't pay it off at the next beginning of the next month. How many know what I'm talking about? When me and Lisa first got married, we were both 19 years old. I'd never been taught finances. I'd never been taught credit card use. My first credit card was a Firestone credit card. How I many y'all remember Firestone? And we bought tires and stuff for our car. The bill was four or $500. I thought, this is easy, man. The guy said, you want to sign for a credit card? I said, sure. You have to pay nothing down. Come on, somebody. But then I got the bill the next month. I didn't have four or $500 to pay it off. So I chose to pay the minimum payment, which was $10. How many of you know if it's 18% interest, paying $10 a month, by the time I paid it off, I ended up paying two or $3,000. So I lost all that interest. When you tithe, you take the first, which belongs to God. Tell your neighbor, the first belongs to God. It's 10%, right? God says when you put that ahead of what's behind, then what's been lost, I lost that interest money. What's been lost is now found by your tithe. Are you following this? So now the 90%, things that the enemy steals, devours. That's what he says in Malachi. Devour, I'll rebuke the devourer. Tries to eat stuff at your life. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Why? Because when you put the 10% first, the 90%, God said whatever's lost is going to be found. The Bible says if a thief be found, He's got to restore sevenfold. Now, I'm teaching y'all something. So when you tithe, what's been lost is now found. Then God takes it and says, I'm going to restore back to you what the enemy stole from you. Now, I'm a tither, and God's taken my 10%, gone back and got what was lost and brought it back to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I'm just trying to help you. So when you put God first, what's lost is going to be restored. Hold your tithe up. I love seeing those blue envelopes, man. Father, thank you. We're a church that believes your word. People watching by internet today are tithing this ministry. God, wherever they are, until they connect with a church home. People are being fed from this storehouse. Lives are being changed from this ministry. And we sow the tithe first. And what's been lost is now found. We declare it in Jesus' name. Somebody shout for God. When the storm is raging all around me You are the peace that comes in my trouble of this world dark in my day You are the light that shines and chokes me away Oh, the beauty of your majesty On the cross you showed your love for me Beautiful I'm captured by this love I see Beautiful Lord Tender and holy Your mercy brings me to my knees It's your mercy that has made me free Beautiful Beautiful Lord, 
Grace remains the shelter that I see And when the weakness is all I can kill Your gentle spirit gives me strength again of your majesty on the cross you showed your love for me beautiful Lord awesome and mighty I'm captured by this love I see beautiful Lord tender and holy Mercy brings me to my knees And I am lifted by your love to save Cause it's your mercy that has made me free And I am lifted by your love to save Because it's your mercy you show your love for me beautiful Lord awesome and mighty I'm captured by this love I see beautiful Lord tender and holy your mercy brings me to my it's your mercy that has made me free, beautiful Lord. Yeah. Stand to your feet, get your Bible. How many of you thank God today he's a beautiful Lord? I said, how many of you thank God on the cross he proved his love for you? We're about ready to celebrate Easter. I said, how many of you thank God on the cross he proved his love for you? It's awesome, man. Awesome, beautiful. Take your Bible, turn to the book of Esther, chapter 4. Esther is right after the book of Nehemiah. It's in the Old Testament. If you have the New King James Bible, it's on page 676. If you got that, you turn right there. If you have the Holy Grail, Braille, King James, Holy Version, I don't know what page that's on. 676. Are you there? I'm feeling good. How many of y'all feeling good today? God's beautiful, incredible, awesome. Amazing. Shoot. Esther chapter 4. You got it? Y'all lying. You ain't there. Esther 4, are you there? Look at verse 14. We're going to get in this. For if you remain completely silent at this time, somebody say at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place tells me God's always going to have his way but you and your father's house will perish yet who knows tell your neighbor who knows mm, 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 mm. who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this wow wow tell your neighbor who knows I'm just tell, I'm feeling that right now. Who knows? I want to preach on how did I get here. 
tell you, neighbor, how did you get here? My car. No, that ain't what I'm talking about. Sit down. I want to say it is a miracle that I am here. And I want to say to other people, it's a miracle that you are here. It's a miracle because what you have been through that you are here today. It's a miracle because some of you, what you've been through emotionally, you are still here. It's a miracle some of you, what you've been through mentally, but you are still here. Some of y'all, it's a miracle what you've been through physically, but you are still here. For some of y'all, what you've been through financially, but you are still here. Because people in this room today, it's a miracle because some of you have been abused physically, mentally, emotionally. Some people have been ripped off financially. Matter of fact, there's some people here that you have arrived at places in your life that you never planned to, but you find yourself here. There are people facing situations right now in this room today you never expected you would have to face in your life. Am I right about it? There are people right now that you're having emotions in your life that you have never, ever experienced. But I came to tell you some good news. Anybody want some good news today? I came to tell you, though what I've been through physically, though what I've been through emotionally, what I've been through mentally, what I've been through financially, where I find myself in situations that I never thought I'd find myself in, what I'm feeling at times in my emotions that I thought I'd never feel myself in, is this, God has planted me where I am. The Bible says in Psalm 139, verse 13, it says, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. You know what that tells me, Pastor Daniel? That tells me the devil has tried to root me out, pull me out, tear me down, destroy me, but I'm planted. That tells me life has thrown me a curve, tried to bring me down by tragedy, by depression, but I found myself planted. That tells me I've been broke. I've been in situations. I thought I'd never see the daylight, but God said, because I planted you, I ain't gone nowhere. You ought to slap your neighbor and say, it's because I'm planted is why I'm here today. And when you find yourself planted by God, you're going to bear fruit no matter what the situation is. It can be barren in this world, but I'm talking to the kingdom of God today. My feet have been planted. And when I'm planted in the house of God, I will flourish. Because my Bible tells me in the book of Haggai, when you take care of God's house first, He'll take care of your stuff for the rest of your life. You ought to be excited today because you know if you put God first and take care of God's stuff first, God's going to take care of you. Who am I talking to right I said, who am I talking to that you know you've taken care of God's stuff? You've taken care of God's work. You've taken care of God's purpose in your life. And God sent me to tell you because you put him first, he's about to put you in a position that's going to shift everything out of the way and give you a promotion. Slap your neighbor and say, are you ready for it? Sit down, sit down. I want to know that there's only two books in the Bible. I want to know how in the book of Esther, and the other book is the Song of Solomon, but in the book of Esther, God's name or the mention of God is never used in that book. I want to know if God's name and the mention of God is not in that book, how did Esther, a poor Jewish peasant girl find herself as the queen of all the regions from India to Ethiopia. I want to know. Who wants to know how that happened? If God is not mentioned, if God is not talked about, how did Esther go from bondage? 
bondage, go from captivity, and now she finds herself perched on a throne. <laughs> Tell you now, you look pretty good perched. <laughs> perched on a throne, Ray. When days before, I got a word for somebody. Days before, she's a Jewish, broke down, poor peasant. I want to know. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. The Bible says, I feel prophetical right here. The Bible says, promotion does not come from the north. The east, west, south, wherever. That's what it says, ain't it? Promotion does not come from the east, west, or south. But promotion, the Bible says, comes from God. I'm going to stop there before I go on. I said promotion does not come from any resource, source you think you got, it comes from God. Because the next part is about to make somebody happy. If promotion comes from God, how did Esther find herself a Jewish peasant girl, now the queen of foreign territory? Because the next verse says, God puts down one to lift up another. So I want to give somebody a word today that's a prophetical word for somebody in this house. There's somebody that's been in your way. There's somebody that's been in your path that God said, I know how to move them out of the way so I can move you right on in. There's something been blocking you. There's something been stopping you. But I declare with a prophetical voice today, after this day is over, God said, I'm bringing that down to lift you up. And God wants me to remind you, you have humbled yourself on the mighty hand of God. And God said, when you humble yourself under his mighty hand, he will exalt you in due season. Slap your neighbor and say, this is my due season. Anybody get that right there? I said promotion's coming. Tell them, tell them, get ready. Promotion's coming. Shake them, tell them. God will do what he's got to do. God will move what he's got to move. God will change what he's got to change. He'll cause your business to shut down. He'll transfer you. He'll reposition you. Some of y'all thought them walking out of your life was the worst thing. You ought to go buy them a box of cigars and say, thank you for walking out. begins to orchestrate movement to get Esther in a place that God already sees why she needs to be there. It's called providence. Divine providence. When you break that word providence down in the Greek, it's two meanings. It means video before. It means video before. Providence. God's got the video and sees the picture before you get there. And some of y'all been questioning God of what am I doing here? And God said, I already got the video. And I've already seen why you are where you are and I got you to that place through your physical pain, through your emotional pain, through the abuse, through the neglect. Daddy never told you he loved you. So what? Mama walked out. It don't matter now because God put you now in the place to say I already saw 
the bigger picture. When pain happens, when things happen, tragedy happens, loss happens, separation happens, all you see is the now. But God has providence, baby, that he's got the video and sees the whole picture before you get there. What you and I got to do is we got to learn to see the bigger picture where we are now. Tell your neighbor, see the bigger picture in your situation. Now, what happened? Y'all got a minute? What happened was the king, uh, uh, Hexerus, King Zexerus, King Ahasuerus, King Zerkidius, King Xerxes. I love these names in the Bible. King Xerxes. I don't care what his name is, the king. (laughs) The king, how many of y'all know, man, back in the Bible, they knew how to throw down? They knew how to throw down a party, man. The king is over 127 provinces. A province is equal to the size of a a state like, you know, Florida or Texas, a, a province, a state. And he's over 127 of them. From India to Ethiopia. That's, that's, that's a lot of property. A lot of influence. A lot of power. And so the king throws a party for 180 days. That's a party. And 180 days, the last seven, the Bible says. Read it. It's in chapter 1. They began to drink royal wine. Not Boone's Farm. Royal wine. What's this show for all you country rednecks? Not out of a red solo cup either. See, I love to mess with y'all because some of y'all get mad when I say stuff, you know, smile. Out of a red solo cup. I don't care what Toby Keith says. Out of a red solo cup. No, read the Bible. It says they poured royal wine for 180 days. The last seven for the small and great. Everybody got included. And they're drinking, watch this, from golden vessels that not two vessels are the same. I don't know about y'all. A lot of people come to my house, I get cups out. Plastic cups so we ain't got to wash dishes. I get paper plates out. Are y'all with me? They didn't do that. They threw it down. 180 days drinking royal wine. At the end of the seventh day, the king's feeling pretty good. And he calls for his wife, Queen Vashta. Queen Vashta just wasn't feeling it. And she said, no. Now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I I wish we went back to the Bible day because women had to obey when the man said, you better come on. She had to come on. (laughs) She said, no, I ain't coming. Everybody went, what? They couldn't believe she rejected the king in front of the whole leadership of all the provinces. And they said, the men said, we can't take that now. They said, you can let that queen do that king. All the women are going to hear about it and they're going to start rebellion. (laughs) Come on, women. Y'all ain't hearing it. Y'all ain't hearing God right now. Obedient. Call me Lord. Feed me grapes. Listen to God. So watch now. They said, get rid of Vashta. She's out. Y'all better hear what I'm telling you prophetically. God's about to move something out. He's orchestrating by divine providence because he's got the video. He sees the bigger picture. So the king says, bring me beautiful young virgins from 127 provinces. I'm going to show you how crazy this is. 127, India to Ethiopia. Thousands of young, beautiful, I ain't talking about none of them look like dogs, they all beautiful. Before this message is over with, I'm going to offend y'all, y'all get mad, and people going, you know, whatever. But 127, I want y'all to see that, now let it sink in. Thousands of women come to the palace. They have housing for them. 
I'm not talking about Daniel. They get there one day and go in the presence of the king the next day, you know, with goody jeans on and, you know, uh, Kmart sweater. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about for six months, the first six months, Pastor Jonas, they are getting bathed in oil and myrrh. Six months. The last six months, they are being cloned up, dolled up, young, beautiful virgins, thousands of them. And they parade one at a time after preparation of 12 months. Can I tell somebody right now, I don't care how long it takes for you to prepare, you better prepare right I don't care how long it looks like this is a waste of time and this is, I can't, but my hair is in place. What do you mean you can't see me now? 12 months, we might got to keep bathing in the same oil. And what are you talking about? See, some women and men will miss the moment because of their impatience to the preparation. I just said something. I said some people miss their moment because of the impatience during the preparation. I feel the Holy Ghost and revelation right there. That's why some of y'all miss your moment in praise and worship because you think your impatience or your preparation to get to the house of God, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Some of y'all rush up in here. Some of y'all are late. Some of y'all ain't gave God a praise because of your impatience to the preparation to get to the place. I'm trying to tell you right now, it matters how you prepare. It matters how you get your spirit ready because in one moment, God can shift everything and move everything and you walk right in to your promotion. Slap your old neighbor and say, prepare for one moment. Do y'all see this? Do you see how important this is? These young beautiful virgins got one shot. Esther shows up on the property. The king's palace and all his properties there is a eunuch there who the bible says in chapter 2 she finds favor with not the king but the one connected to the king so i'm feeling prophetic on everything i'm saying listen to me get what i'm saying statements i'm making god's making through me for you Hear what I'm telling you. Now, I don't think I'm that. I'm telling you God's speaking through me today, and you got to get these statements. Is that God is saying to you, you don't have to get to the source to get favor. He can favor you with the one that's connected to the source. Y'all better hear what I'm telling y'all. God's trying to drop this in your spirit, and some of y'all rejected it. I'm telling you right now, if you prepare yourself, don't be impatient in the preparation for that one moment. God's saying, I'm going to favor you in the eyes of the one that is connected to the one you're trying to get to. Thousands of young ones. Thousands. What God Esther noticed by that king in that one moment. Now they're parading for the king each day, 12 months. How many men want to be in that king's position? You know, come on. All you men, look at you. Everybody's looking straight ahead going. Hope she ain't looking. Y'all know good and well, you want to be that king and watch all these young beautiful virgins walk through your presence and you get to pick one. Hey, look, he ain't laying with all of them either. Y'all think he's tapping on all of them. He ain't tapping on all of them. Make it plain, Bishop. If you can't have this kind of preaching, you go down to Baptist church. I don't preach like that. And let me just call it out right now. Some of y'all are tapping on places you ought to be tapping on up in here. Let me just say that again. Some of y'all are tapping on places you ought not be tapping on up in there. Oh, at New Hope? Yeah, at New Hope. I don't mean tapping on no typewriter either. They, they coming through 
down. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this for a reason. Because on the other end of the story, you find out that those that did get picked, Jonas, they call them, they're still called virgins. God, that's good. So that means, here's a statement coming from God. That means you don't have to compromise who you are for God to promote you. I've been doing this thing a long time, y'all. I've been in denominations. Man didn't notice me. Denomination didn't help me. People didn't tell me. I could do it. They told me I couldn't do it. So I've learned one thing. If I've learned one thing, you can't convince me otherwise, baby, because I've had the experience of it. And you can argue with me all you want, but I've experienced this one thing, that all it takes is God to put you in the right place at the right time with the right people and it don't matter what people say baby you about to shoot up tell your neighbor I don't know where you've been I don't know what you've been doing but God's telling you you about to rise up you about to rise up from here says the king favors Esther and calls her Queen Esther. And now she finds herself in a place. What's this? What's this? Because as queen, she thought she was there just to look good. She thought she was there just to have royal dinners. She thought she was there just to be by her husband's side, which all those things are good. But there was a higher, here comes a statement again. There is a higher purpose in where you are. There is a higher purpose in where you are more than you realize. Because if you don't recognize the moment, you'll miss the higher purpose. Can feel this, can't you? How God's just spitting this stuff out of statements. Because I'll preach and get going, and now God will stop me and say, Say the statement right here. I said, Some of you don't realize there's a higher purpose in where you are. So now Esther is thinking this is only all there's to it. But now, in the meantime, somebody say, In the meantime, in the meantime, she is in the place of authority and power. But now the enemy is plotting against the people she is connected to. See, Mordecai is who raised her. Mordecai in the story is just as important as Esther, but I'm preaching on Esther today. Because Mordecai stayed faithful unnoticed at a gate. And at that gate, Mordecai was still overseeing Esther, though he's at a gate. A gate in the Bible represents a position of leadership and access. Mordecai is at the gate. He hears two disgruntled uh, keepers of the king complaining, and they're going to assassinate the king. Mordecai sends word to Esther because she has the king's ear. Are y'all seeing this? And because she's in position of a higher purpose, she literally saves the king's life based on the word Mordecai sent from the street. And the king, watch this now, does not remember Mordecai at that moment, but God does. All right. I'm about to slap somebody now. I'm trying to tell you, men will forget about you. Man will throw you to the side, and man will forget your value. But there is one person today in your life that will never, never forget the good you have done. And that is God. I'd rather let God remember me and let man forget me. Because man will forget you at a drop of a hat and throw you to the roadside, baby. But God will never forget who you are, where you came from, and what he's put in you to do. Slap your neighbor and say, God will never forget you. But they write it down in the book of Chronicles to, to, to uh, record... The act, and that's important because I'm going to say that in this message. The act Mordecai did, and now they move on. Because a dude named Haman, like a soap opera, y'all. Haman 
is the king's right hand man and Haman has authority and prestige and influence and what I tell you about Psalm 75 6 and 7 that promotion does not come from the east west or south but it comes from God and knows how to bring one down and lift up a so Haman is in position of authority. Haman wants to abuse his power, and he wants everybody to bow before him, pay homage to him. And every time he walks through the gate, Mordecai said, I ain't studying you. So Mordecai never pays him homage. Mordecai, and it irritates Haman. Haman, it bothers him. Isn't it amazing, y'all, that in the flip side of this, isn't it amazing how a hundred people will like you and one don't, the one that don't like you bother you, and the hundred people that like you, you forget about? That come out right? I can get up here and preach two services and man pull it down and preach hard and it's that one negative person I see that bothers me. It's that one expression on people's face that always draws me and I go, and ready y'all tearing it down, pulling your hair out? I'm still drawing that one that's just looking at me like. That's just a side note. Anyway, Haman, so Haman says, I got to do something about this Mordecai. He ain't bowing to me. He ain't paying homage to me. Haman comes up with this plot to destroy, watch this now, here's another statement, to destroy not just Mordecai, but all the people of the Jews. Mm -mm. Let me help you, man. Let me help you here. The enemy is not after just to destroy you. He wants to destroy not only you, but your lineage, your heritage, your inheritance, your legacy. He wants to destroy you. Are y'all hearing me? There's two times the devil comes after you to destroy you. It's at the beginning and it's at the end. Y'all want me to preach that later on to you? I'll preach that later on to you in the life of Moses. The enemy wants to destroy your beginning. If he can't get you at the beginning, he pulls you down at the end. Because he don't want you to start right and he don't want you to finish right. I said the devil don't want you to start right, but if you start right, then baby, his plot is to bring you down so you won't finish right. So I came to tell you, the enemy's not just after you to destroy you. He's trying to take you down. He's trying to take people around you down. He's trying to take your family down. He's trying to take your heritage down and your inheritance. But i got to find me somebody today that will stand up and say, Brother, I am here to where I am because of what I've been through. And I'll pray you out. Y'all ain't hearing me. I want to tell the devil right now, you spirit of Jezebel, you spirit of Absalom, I'm coming against you right now, and I'm going to pray your butt out of this ministry. You ain't going to pull it down. And I find me somebody that knows what I'm talking about. Tell your neighbor, I'll pray you out. I'm going to pull you out. I'll cut you. I'll shoot you. I'll display you. Y'all ain't hearing me. See, some of y'all don't take this serious. I do. Haman said, I want all the Jews killed. Sounds like Hitler to me. I want all the Jews killed. King Exorus Xerxes gets his signet ring, stamps it on the letter. I'm almost done. Give me five. Who give me five minutes? Who give me ten? Who give me 15, 20, 25, 30, 35? I didn't say five. I said ten. Who give me ten? Thank you. My daughter's going, I'll give you five. I didn't say five. I want ten. Haman says, King, there are, there are a people that are not obeying and not bowing and not paying homage. He said, here's the word in the Bible, let's annihilate them. So you think this is a game? This ain't a game. Let's annihilate them. Let's kill their influence. One thing I've learned is the devil wants to kill your influence. God, oh my, y'all ain't here. Because that's what you have is influence on people. And if he can tear that down, you lose it, baby. If you lose influence with people. He said, let's annihilate all of them. Now watch me, I'm almost done. Let's annihilate them. Let's annihilate them. 
Watch, watch, watch how God just starts twisting this thing and turning this thing for the good. I tell you, all things work together for good. Then that love God and are called according to his purpose. That's another statement. I'm telling you, God works all things together for good. What looks like God has ignored, what looks like God has forgotten, what looks like God has put to the side. He hadn't, baby. He's got his eyes on it. So Haman builds gallows to hang Mordecai on. Watch this. But the queen is where she is because of divine providence. Because the video is already out. And the queen says, hey, King, you remember how your life got spared? Hey, watch this. How your life got spared. What would you ever do for that guy? He said, you know what? We never did nothing for him. He said, call Haman in. Haman, what should we do for the guy? Watch where pride takes you. Pride comes for destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. He said, Haman, what should we do for the one who has spared the king and the king values? The Bible says Haman thinks he's talking about him. Haman says, put a royal robe on him. Put him on a horse. Parade him through the town in a parade where everybody's saluting him and honoring him. And watch this. The king said, go get Mordecai. Come on, somebody. He said, go get Mordecai. I'm about to shout now. Go get the one you despise and the one you hate and the one you can't stand and the one you're trying to take out. I came to tell you, God's about to flip this thing for somebody. Those that despise you, those that hate you, God's about to bless you through them. That's another prophetical word, and you better get it. I said God's about to flip the script. God's about to flip the script, baby. He's about to take the one that they thought they were bringing you down, and God's going to turn it, and now they're going to bring you up. I ain't got time. So watch. They come in. Haman is excited. Esther says, uh, King, by the way, what should we do for the one who's trying to destroy my people? The king said, Who is he? We're going to pull that sucker down. Who is he? She said, It's Haman. I got a word. I feel it right there, baby. Is give people enough rope, they'll hang themselves. Y'all didn't hear me. What Haman built to hang Mordecai on, he was really building his own destruction. Y'all better hear how bad God is. Because God, watch this, when Mordecai saved the king's life, they brought the books to him. He now knows it's Mordecai. He said, Haman, you're the one trying to deceive and destroy. I'm going to destroy you. So what you built for somebody else, I'm going to destroy you through the same measure. It's the Bible. What you measure, be measured back to you. Y'all ain't hearing me. What you sow, you're going to reap. Y'all ain't hearing me. So when you start trying to sow destruction in other people's life, the same thing you're sowing is going to come back to you and pull you down. You better be careful, baby. And so the Give them, tell your neighbor, give your enemy enough rope, he'll hang himself. And all you got to do is just shut up, be faithful, keep being loyal, keep serving God, keep praising God, and you watch what God's going to do. He's going to bring it down to bring you up. Somebody shut Stand to your feet. Somebody shout, right people, right places, right time. Watch, watch. So I, I, I had the video for y'all. I preached before I actually got to the story. Providence. Mordecai comes to Esther and says, Esther, what you going to do about this? You're in a position of influence, a higher purpose than just being the wife of the king. God put you here to bring change 
Here's the next statement. How are you going to be where God puts you and never change? You ought to hear that. How are you going to remain? Mordecai said to Esther, if you remain silent at this time, God will, he didn't say God, he said, but deliverance will, will rise up from another place. You don't hear the name God, but you see his handprint throughout this whole story. I'm trying to tell you right now that if you don't obey God in the place you are to bring change, it will come through somebody else. Y'all ain't hearing me, New Hope. New Hope, we are going to obey God because we're not going to die and dry up and quit being an influence and making a difference in this community. Because if I know one thing, God put me here. And if God put me here, it wasn't to remain the same and have the same ministry we had 20 years ago. That's called a monument and not a movement. We are in a movement, not trying to wrap a monument around a movement. That's why denominations are dying, churches are dying, because they're trying to build a monument by a past movement. But God told me this is a movement. Don't try to build a monument and keep it stuck in the same place. So if God put me in this place, I'm supposed to change. I got one more word. Are y'all ready? I said I got one more word. Are y'all ready? Let me tell somebody something. Y'all all right? Y'all ready to go? I can close it down right now if y'all ready to go. If somebody comes up to you in the streets tomorrow, and they say to you, man, you know, you ain't never changed. That's not a compliment. If somebody walks up to you and says, man, you're still the same like you were in high school, that's an insult. You don't ever change, do you? That's an insult. I'm being, I ain't being funny. That's an insult. If somebody walk up to you and see you 20 years later and say, She's the same person. He's the same person. He, he ain't changed a lick, has he? That means you've been in a place where God put you and you remain the same. Here's the word. Assignment. Assignment. I am on an assignment. The word assignment means an appointment. I'm on an appointment. Watch. It means a particular task or duty, position of responsibility, post of duty, assignment, an appointment of God, a particular task or duty, a position of responsibility. Military people understand this, post of duty, that where you are placed is your assignment. But what we miss is we don't like the assignment at the place God put us. And so we miss the moment because of complaining about the assignment in the place we are. Tell your neighbor, I'm on an assignment. And don't mess with me. Tell them I'm on an assignment. Don't mess with me. I have a post of duty. Don't mess with me. I have a task. I have an appointment. This is my responsibility. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm out of here. How many of you want to be promoted by God? How many of you want to be lifted up from where you are? How many of you ready to go to another realm, another dimension, another level in your life, and you're tired of being the same? How many of you ready for that? How many of y'all ready? How many of y'all ready? How many of y'all ready? Watch this. If God's going to put it on you, here comes greater responsibility and greater pressure. Are you ready for it? Now, how many of y'all ready for it? When God lifts you up, here comes a greater responsibility and a greater pressure. Are you ready for it? You can't have the promotion without the pressure. You can't have the promotion without the responsibility. You know what some of y'all need to do? You need to do like Esther. 
See, Esther couldn't go in the presence of the king unless called for. And 30 days a decree went out, don't anybody come to the presence of the king. And even if his own wife walked in the presence of the king, by decree, he had to kill her. That's when Mordecai said, if you remain silent, Esther, you think this ain't going to affect you, it's going to affect you and me and our whole family. Y'all better hear me. See, by doing nothing is the dangerous thing you can do. By doing nothing is the most dangerous thing you can do. Oh, I'm not going to do nothing. That's right. That's the most dangerous thing you can do is do nothing. He said, because if you do nothing, it's coming from another place. She said, I'm done. She said, well, she all praying fast three days. I'm going in. She said, if I die, I die. You know what Esther came to, y'all? Esther said, I'm tired of making excuses. Esther said, I'm tired of running. Esther said, I'm tired of complaining. She said, I'm going in. And I'm going in giving it all. Because if you're going to go up, you got to give it all. I said, if you're going to go up, you got to give it all. Jesus said, if you're going to find your life, you got to lose your life. He said, if a man's going to follow me, take up your cross and follow me. My cross ain't like your cross. What I got to carry ain't what you're carrying. We're all carrying a different cross. But if you don't carry a cross, God's going to find somebody else to carry it for you. How many of y'all ready to stop running, quit making excuses, and ready to go in? God, I'm ready to go in. I'm ready to go for it. I'm ready to go where you want me to go, do what you want me to do. I'm ready to get the place you want me to be in. Because if it had not been for you, God, I would not be here. Join hands with somebody. Come across the aisle. Come across the aisle. Hurry. You know what she had to do is what you got to do right now. I'm, I'm, listen to me. I felt this throughout this whole message moments. You got to recognize a God moment. I'm going to say that again. You got to recognize a God moment. If it's a God moment, go for it. If it's not a God moment, don't go. But the Holy Spirit is speaking to some people right now. You know what, Daniel? Let me ask you a question. Could Esther ever saw herself in the position of a queen while she was a Jewish peasant? No. You know why she could never see herself like that? Because there was no way by law she ever would be in that position. <laughs> but God. I'm telling you, man, I, I, I'm feeling this prophetically. For some people in this room right now watching the internet, God is going to bring down something to bring you up in it. The Holy Spirit is talking to you. Now I want you to, before you respond, don't respond by emotion. Respond by the inner voice of God's Spirit in your heart going, that's you, that's you. Pulling you, pulling you to respond to. Not based on what looks like as obstacles, but based on what God can do. The problem with us, we don't see the bigger picture. And the problem with us, we never see ourselves in a kind of position that God wants to put us in. Stop looking at that as impossible and start seeing yourself in it. And hear me one more thing and I'm done. I could teach you all day. Start, hear me, start putting a demand on the anointing in your life. Do you know what I mean by that? I said, do you know what I mean by that? Start putting a demand on what God has rubbed in you consecrated you for and put a demand on it. Say, God, I'm putting a demand on my calling. Because you have not brought me through what you brought me through to put me where I am to not bring change. If that's you, now come. Now come. I want the Holy Spirit to speak to you because this is a God moment. This is a God moment for you. Until you ain't, nobody, ain't nobody responding out of emotion. You're responding out of a call. 
Holy Spirit is calling you. So I will run. Spread all the way across from end to end. End to end. You're watching the internet. Lift your hands where you are. We're coming right now. Come on. Where else can I go? That's right. Begin to worship him. Come on, sing it out. Say, so I will you something right now. Y'all ready for this? Are y'all ready? I said y'all ready. December, I was in a pre-K Christmas party. Kids were having a Christmas party. Terry Fountain, the lady that was over the pre-K, I had no sign, no warning, nothing. This ain't a bad thing. She walked up to me that day. She said, Bishop, I feel a shift. I feel a move coming on. I thought she was talking about a God was you know, moving in her life and stuff. She said, no, God's moving me to Virginia and I'm leaving in 30 days. I went, okay, Merry Christmas. The Bible says God knows how to position, move one and lift another. Are y'all with me? Kelly was there. Kelly was there teaching Spanish. Como esta? Si. Muchos gracias. Muchos gracias. Adios. Amigos. Right? That's what she was doing. Watch this. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to somebody. The Holy Ghost is speaking to somebody. Here, I, I'm going to tell you how fast this happened for her. She moved out. God moved her in. Watch. From being just coming and teaching Spanish to now she is over the pre-K school. You're saying, did you see that coming? No. Did you see that coming? No, not at all. Did, you, didn't even, you, you, you didn't even see yourself in that position, did you? Yes, sir. Didn't see yourself being over that, did you? Did you see yourself? I'm telling somebody something right now. I didn't do this in the first service. I felt compelled to do it. I'm telling somebody right now. God is about to blow somebody's mind up in here. Today, you don't see it, but God is about to move something and put you in it. Now worship. So I will run. Do you believe it? Today, God, move it, God. Lord, blow her mind. 
Blow her mind, God. Move one out. Put another in. And another motion. Get ready for it. I said get ready for it. Get ready for it. How many of y'all get ready? Prepare yourself today. Say it. Lift your hands. And I ain't trying to be all deep. I ain't trying to be weird. And I ain't trying to be spooky. But I'm telling you right now, I'm commanding every spirit that's trying to attach itself to your life, to hinder your progress, to confuse you, to put you on a detour. God, I feel God. I bind that. Where's my prayer warriors? I bind that spirit up in the name of Jesus that's got to be loose from your life in the name of the Lord it's got to be loose I'm telling you God's moving up in here somebody shout you got to get out of here you got to get out of my life you got to get out of my family you got to get out of my health you got to get out of my future you ain't going to take it you ain't going to take it I got it Got it. Give him a supposed to do in this community why are we here what am I supposed to do why am I here what am I supposed to do in my family what am I supposed to do with my children what am I supposed to do where I'm at I'm asking the question you know what bring change we are here to bring change not change for the sake of change change for the good are you with me Put your hand on your neighbor. I want everybody to get ready. We're going to leave with an offering. Anybody in this building, you want to be saved? You want to give your heart to Jesus? If you're in this building today and you're ready to make a change, you're ready to surrender your life to God, if that's you, lift both your hands. Lift both your hands. Are you coming to do that? Y'all let them through right there. Anybody else? Lift both your hands. I got some on this end, Greg. This end. Lift your hands. Jordan, I can see you all right, right there. You got it, Jordan. Lift your hands. Anybody else, you want to give your heart to God, say, Bishop, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready to run after him. I'm ready to rededicate my life. I see it. Anybody else? Thank you. Lift your hands. Don't be ashamed. We love you, man. There ain't nobody judging nobody up in here. We love you. It's time to make a change. How many want to make a change in your life? That's all it's about is giving your heart to God. Anybody else? Lift your hands. I see hands. Hold them up, hold them up, hold them up. Thank you, ma'am. Hold them up. Somebody help them. Somebody help them. Their hands will get tired in a minute. Go up beside them. Hold their arm up for them. Hold your hands up. Y'all help them. Help them. Hold their arm up for them. Come on, we get involved in this. This is cool. Anybody else? Everybody, everybody going to pray with you. You ain't going to pray by yourself. 
I want to hear everybody's voice. Watching my internet, you can pray the same prayer where you are. I want to hear your voice. Say it with me. Jesus, I ain't hearing everybody. Say it. Jesus, I come to you today, and I realize my life is empty without you. But with you, it is complete. I am yours, and you are mine forever. Forgive me of all my sin. Heal me from all my hurt. I'll praise you and serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give Jesus the greatest praise up in here tonight. Sing it one more time to it. Come on. And say, get you an offering out right now. Hug your neighbor. Nobody leave. Get you an offering. Get ready to sow a seed. I need everybody in this building. I got to announce something about Easter. Close them doors. Something to hold on a second. Hug your neighbor. Hug your neighbor. Hug your neighbor. You can sit down. Easter Sunday, we're doing three services. Everybody say three. Eight o'clock, 9.30, and 11.30. Last year, we had 3,100 people in here. The second service, people were packed in the foyer watching on the TVs. Our big Easter outreach is Saturday before Easter. How many of y'all know that? So if you could bring candy this week, next week, plastic eggs, please help us. Say, I'll help you. I need, I need 100 people or a family, like, like if my family raised their hand, that'd be one family. I need, I need at least 100 that will say, Bishop, I'll give up my seat at 1130 and I'll come to 8 o'clock. Who will do that for me? Lift your hand. Hold it until somebody gives you a, a form. You're a seed family to open up your seat for another family to come at 11.30. You come at 8, you'll be home by 9.30. That's going to be cool, isn't it? You come at 8 o'clock, we'll be done at 9.15, 10 after 9. Hold it. Thank you for doing it. Hold it up till Usher finds you. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing it. God bless you for doing it. People will come at 8, 9.30, 11.30. It's going to be packed all day long. So thank you for your sacrifice to get up early and come at 8 o'clock. 11.30 will be probably the most traditionally fullest service, but you're giving up a seat, all right? You good? I need everybody to listen to the Holy Spirit right now. Bow your head. Father, I pray the Holy Spirit speak to us what to give. Speak to us not a normal amount, but an extraordinary offering. Touch every heart to give something in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. Get your offering. Hold it up. God bless you. Come to the front, sow your seed. We love y'all. Remember, say tomorrow at 5.30. Say it. Tomorrow at 5.30. Everybody say tomorrow at 5.30. Corporate prayer in this sanctuary for 30 minutes. Be here. It's a great atmosphere. Love you. All of our first-time guests, if this is your first time, we'd love to see you right over here to my right and your left. If this is your first time, we have a gift for you. Also, if you made a decision for Christ today, we have a Bible if you need one. Right over here for extended prayer or any extended prayer whatsoever. As you exit today and you took an egg with a dollar amount or you'd like to help us with Easter, there's an individual out there with a shirt on that says donate here. You can stop by and give us a donation. Also, get your Shift Happens bracelets today. They're only $2. Help us, help us set the atmosphere for Shift Happens or get that book. It's only $10 as well. We'll see you tomorrow night at 5.30 for Corporate Prayer. If you're watching by way of internet, you can take this service, put it right on your Facebook, or we're always available on mynhi.org. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you tomorrow night for prayer.